This video has less to do with me and has more to do with what's best for children. Let me begin by saying that I really do respect teachers. Teachers have a difficult job and there are so many talented teachers out there who have students who look up to them, who respect them, who view them as role models. So don't get me wrong, I am not saying that public education as a whole is bad. I'm just saying there's room for improvement. And so without further ado, let's get into the reasons why I quit public school teaching after only two years. Reason number one, the way that it's set up in the public schools makes it so that kids are just driven to compete against each other. And it doesn't really become about learning anymore. It becomes about seeing who got the better grade, who got the approval of the teacher. I just don't really feel that it's an environment where we are honestly seeking to find the joy in learning. It's an environment where instead we're competing against one another. And I just find that with all the test taking and comparing results, that it just kind of drives this capitalistic mindset from a young age. And we live in a capitalistic society. So to a degree, I believe that kids need a bit of a competitive drive in order to make it in this world. But when you're going to school to learn and that's supposedly the main focus, I think that gets lost in the competitive drive that most students have. I saw this all the time. As soon as I gave back a test, the first thing that the kids wanted to do was compare results. And inevitably, some kids felt badly for getting lower scores than others. It all just had to do so much with numbers and really measuring your value or your worth against your peers. And I just didn't think that this was healthy. I could see it. Kids would feel disappointed when they realized they were the ones with the lowest grade or maybe they didn't want to share but they felt peer pressured into sharing. Going along with that, I really didn't enjoy assessing children on basically everything that they did. The children couldn't just learn and find intrinsic joy in that. It always had to be measured. Reason number two, I felt that children lacked creativity because they were more concerned about what I thought that they should produce than what they thought, especially when it came time for the more creative, open-ended projects, they really struggled. They could not just do what they wanted to do because they were so concerned about meeting my expectations. And in this world, don't we want to bring up a generation of children who are creative, who are problem solvers, who believe in what they are creating? I know I do. Reason number three goes along with reason number two, and that is that children sought validation from me for everything that they did. And obviously this is a generalization, but I'm saying the vast majority sought validation for everything that they did, to feel like they did a good job, to feel like they earned a good grade. And again, I didn't feel like this was good for children, to always be seeking validation outside of themselves. Shouldn't we be fostering an environment where children are feeling proud of themselves and that they don't need to rely on anyone else to feel that way? Reason number four. As much as I tried my very best to make school engaging, kids just were bored and I could sense it. I would be up at the front trying to teach a lesson. Kids would be yawning. They would be fidgeting in their desks. They would be snapping pencils. I had one student in particular who would not stop snapping pencils. I think one of the reasons why is because kids want to use their hands. They want to manipulate things. They want to build things. They want to move. And quite frankly, in schools, we do not do a lot of moving. And I hardly think that 30 minutes of physical education counts as a lot of movement. It just doesn't. It doesn't make up for the rest of the day, the other six hours of school that involve kids sitting most of the day. And sure, you can do movement breaks. You can do fun little brain breaks, which I try to implement. But even still, kids just wanted to move. They wanted to get outside. They wanted to play soccer. And unfortunately, with the demands of the curriculum, with the demands of being in a public school, there just wasn't time for that. And there's no secret that kids could use more movement. We are animals by nature. We are meant to move our bodies. We are meant to have a large amount of space in our habitat. But our habitat has been reduced to four walls, sitting inside a box all day. Reason number five, there was no real time for child-led learning. And I mean, it kind of goes without saying, right? The teacher is there to teach the students, not the other way around, or the children aren't there to teach themselves. Definitely not. But why not? 
why can't children be given more time to direct their own learning, to self-educate? After all, we humans are really good at teaching ourselves. We're good at observing and learning from others. But we can't even do that at school because that counts as cheating. In public schools, curriculum takes precedence every single time. I tried to do a few projects where kids could choose what they wanted to do, but even then, they struggled because that's not what they're used to. They are used to the teacher handing them instructions all of the time. If we want to raise children who are independent, who have the ability to direct themselves, how are we going to do that if we never give them the opportunity to direct themselves? It's frustrating to me, and I wish that public schools gave more space for children to direct their own learning. After two years of teaching, I was spent. I had had enough. I watched these kids just struggle, feel bored, be bouncing off the walls because they couldn't really do any more than that as far as movement was concerned. I had had enough, and so I decided to quit. And I began a new journey as a different type of educator who focuses on childhood learning and being in the natural world. Being in the public education system made me want there to be a more holistic approach to learning. An approach to learning where kids' needs are actually met. Movement, the physical part of a child is met. The mental, the emotional, the spiritual, the intellectual, all parts of the child. So my question is, how can we improve the public education system to meet the needs of the whole child? And how can we improve childhood in general so that children are thriving? On this channel, I'm going to be exploring rewilding education, rewilding childhood, and just rewilding in general, rewilding humanity. Because I think we need this more than ever in our world today. Thank you for listening. Please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any videos regarding how we can better children's lives, how we can better children's education. And make sure to leave a comment below telling me what you believe is missing in our public education system. Thank you for joining me today, and I will see you next week.